So as the ancients looked up at the sky, it was obvious that everything went around us. We see the sun rise in the east and set in the west. We see the moon go across the sky. We were centered. We were the center of that universe. The problem was that model got a little complicated. If you observe the planets over weeks and months, they were making little loops. They weren't just going around in beautiful arcs. They were doing little loops. The model became more and more complicated. But it had us at the center of our universe. Then Copernicus comes along and says, this is a really complicated model. You know, it's much simpler if we put the sun in the middle. Born in 1473, mathematician Nicholas Copernicus had no way to prove his theory because he had no way to make the observation. Afraid of clashing with the church and other astronomers, he didn't publish his theory until the year he died. 50 years later, in 1609, an Italian scientist hears about a Dutch invention that makes objects appear closer. Within a day, Galileo builds his own telescope. So Galileo looks at the moon. The moon was supposed to be this perfect orb. And he sees for the first time the moon is not perfect. It has mountains, it has craters. He sees the Milky Way. The Milky Way is not just this cloud made up of individual stars. But the most important observation, the one that was truly revolutionary, he looked at Jupiter. And he saw four pinpricks of light. He assumed they were stars. Went back the next night and saw there were only three, and they'd moved. The next night, they moved again. Every night, the pinpricks are changing. And then he realized that these were not stars. They were moons going around. Jupiter. Everything was supposed to be going around the Earth, and here was proof that it wasn't. And he realizes that the ancients were wrong, the church was wrong, Copernicus was right. The whole world collapses into this beautiful simplicity, and we're going around the sun. <laughs>